Uh, Ruth, uh, we talked to Scott Ross of One Wisconsin Now yesterday, and uh, not maybe this change specifically, but in general, he said the governor's changes reeked of corruption and cronyism. Do you see any of that at play, at play here? Well, I think, yeah, if you look overall at the governor's appointments here, what you see is sort of the Milwaukeeization of Wisconsin. So uh, just as he did when he was county executive in Milwaukee, Walker is moving uh, his political allies uh, and industry folks into these positions where, uh, you know, you have industry people who are now regulators. And, and the most egregious example of that, of course, is the Public Sur- Service Commission, not just HIP, who's the head of it, but uh, the second man there, Bob Seitz, who's you know, the lobbyist for the Gogebic Taconite mine. So, you know, putting him in a key position at the Public Service Commission is really, really advantageous to the industry he represents. Uh, You know, you see... What, I think one of the things that came out of all the scrutiny of Walker's time as county executive in Milwaukee is the way that he moved these partisan hacks into offices uh, where they were supposed to serve the public. And that was a big change because you often have po- career public servants running agencies because they actually believe in serving the public. And if you look at this list of appointments, it's hard to see the public service aspect to it. I mean, Brian Schimming, who's done a lot of time on this show, a uh, very snarky right-wing blogger. I saw him give a seminar on... Uh, being derisive and snarky in your blog to a bunch of right-wing bloggers. He's now running the agency that, uh, you know, takes care of housing for the poor. I mean, it's, you know, it's very similar to the folks that Walker brought in in Milwaukee who wrote the uh, nasty emails deriding the mentally ill and uh, people of color and, you know, the poor who were they were allegedly there to serve, but really they were there to run a campaign operation. And it's the same thing now for our whole state. You know, this is not about public service. This is not about Wisconsin, even. This is about Walker's presidential campaign and, you know, turning Wisconsin into the base of operations for his political ambitions, which is the exact same thing you saw him do in Milwaukee, bringing in people who had contempt for the people they were serving, who turned the government basically into a political machine to further Walker's career. And you see it on the policy level with the attacks on UW, on education in our state, and you see it on this staffing level where he's moving these hacks into positions of power so that they can further his career. Why do we need the guy that runs the 527 (laughs) collecting unlimited money to run Walker's presidential campaign helping to run our hospital? I mean, it's just hard to make that argument because, yes, he has some medical backgrounds. Pretty weak reply. There's a, you know, there is a a depth of depravity here that we really haven't seen before, and that's why I think the comparison to Milwaukee is so apt. I mean, look at the housing agency, which was the site of a lot of scandal in Milwaukee, where, you know, you see people mocking the constituents that they serve and working on the governor's campaign on state on at that time county time so you know you see this uh this pattern of putting the top people in your campaign into these posts that are basically public service posts in order to further your campaign and with really a a a very aggressive contempt for the people that they serve. And that's what you see when you see a, a public service commission that now has a GTAC mine <laughs> lobbyist on it. You know, that's what you see when you see Brian Schimming uh, running a housing agency for the poor, a guy who's had said more nasty things about poor people than most people in this state. You know, you see these really uh, aggressive hacks. That's really different from somebody who has a long political career and knows people in a lot of fields and appoints them to posts for which they are are qualified and in which they have some expertise. It's not really standard operating procedure to take somebody who's running the organization that's collecting unlimited money for your presidential ambitions and put them on a hospital board in your state. And this is really, we're talking New Jersey politics here. We're not talking what has been up till now, Wisconsin.